Hi there, in this short video, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step the process of applying a compressor to a voice recording. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to load up your compressor in Pro Tools, and then I'm gonna tweak the attack time, the release time, the ratio, and I'm gonna show you a great trick using the threshold that will allow you to hear all these tiny changes that you make. And finally, I'm gonna show you how it sounds if your attack time or your release time is too long. So let's dive straight in. So here I have a voiceover in Pro Tools. And although I am using Pro Tools, you can apply these same steps to any compressor or DAW. Reaper's a great choice. It's got a great free trial. So if you're looking for a good, a good door to use, check out Reaper. But you can do exactly the same thing in Audacity. The only problem with Audacity is that you can't see your audio in real time. And you'll know exactly what I mean in a second. But regardless, this is Pro Tools, and the first step for me here was to actually add an EQ. Now, so that you can see, I haven't done anything too drastic. All I've done is cut away some of the bass to get rid of the low-end rumble and some of the low-end noise in the environment. So all we're going to be listening to is a compressor. So here's my compressor in Pro Tools. The first thing I'm going to do now is play back this voiceover so that you can hear it dry without any compression and so that you can have a look at this compressor and become familiar with it if you haven't seen it before. So let's take a listen. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. Once you've made a recording. So there you go, you can hear it. it's, it's my voice again, actually. But that time on this voiceover, I was using an MD41 microphone, which is a great voiceover mic. It's a dynamic microphone. What you're hearing now is a condenser. And I'm going to write an article about this in the future. But for now, just be aware that that voice sounds different because it's with a different microphone. It sounds a bit warmer. So now the first step, whenever we apply a compression, for me anyway, is to lower the threshold. And what this does is engages the compressor. You could see on this graph here, a dot moving around, and that was where the audio was as we were listening back. And the threshold, if you can remember, determines when the compressor kicks in. So if we bring the threshold really low, the compressor is gonna be engaged the whole time. And then what we can do is we can tweak our attack time, our release time, and our ratio, and we'll be able to clearly hear the changes that we're making. And then once we've made our changes and we're happy with them, we dial the threshold back to normal. It'll probably be around minus 24. So first of all, let's have a look with that extreme threshold and let's move the settings to, to what I think roughly will work as a starting point, and then we'll work from there. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. So you can hear it's really over compressed. You can really hear the sound of the compressor kicking in. And of course, this isn't how our audio is going to sound at the end. This is just to give you an idea of how it sounds. Now I want to show you what it sounds like when your attack is too slow. So we're here we're at the recommended starting settings, around two milliseconds attack and close enough to 12 milliseconds release. And we've also got a nice subtle ratio, three to one. So now I'm gonna play the recording again and this time as I increase the attack, I want you to listen to how the audio changes. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. Once you've made a recording, there's normally imperfections. I mean, come on, you've done all, everything in your power to make sure everyone knew you're recording, you eliminated all background noise or as much as you could, yet in a, one of your best takes that you... So I don't know if you noticed there, but as I increase the attack, the compressor stops working because all of the words were so quick and speech is actually really quick compared to singing or an instrument. It was all slipping through the compressor. The attack was so slow 
that before the compressor had a chance to kick in, the word had already finished. And then around here, between up to 10 second, milliseconds, it can sound okay, but around there, that's when we start to compress only the ends of words and not the beginning. Now I'm gonna do the same for release. Have a listen to this. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. Once you've made a recording, there's normally imperfections. I mean, come on. You've done all, everything in your power to make sure everyone knew you are recording. You eliminated all background noise or as much as you could. Yet, in a, one of your best takes that you're just really happy with, there's a random noise halfway through. You can't be perfect every time. And this is where editing comes into it. So now let's talk about editing. So you could hear there when the release is really slow, there's no dynamic to the speech. It squashes it all at a constant level because it's not reacting to the varying dynamics. All it's doing is engaging the compressor and leaving it on. It's not taking into consideration the varying level and volume of our speech. So now that we are got our settings, we've got our ratio around three to one, and we can clearly hear what's going on. I'm just gonna bring back the threshold now. And in this final play round, I'm gonna tweak the threshold. I'm gonna tweak the ratio, the attack and the release a tiny bit just till I find what sounds good. And then towards the end, I'm also gonna bring up the gain so that the output gain matches the input gain. So let's have a listen to that. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. Once you've made a recording, there's normally imperfections. I mean, come on, you've done all, everything in your power to make sure everyone knew you were recording, you eliminated all background noise or as much as you could, yet in a, one of your best takes that you're just really happy with, there's a random noise halfway through. You can't be perfect every time, and this is where editing comes into it. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing. So you hear, so now it's starting to sound more natural. I'm trying to make it really subtle here. We don't want to go much higher than minus six decibels in reduction. And on this, I want it to sound quite natural, so I'm not gonna have the compressor fully engaged. I'm gonna bring the threshold up quite high so that it only catches the loudest parts. I'm also now gonna bring in a knee to make it sound even more natural. So let's have one final listen. So now let's talk about editing. And this is something else that the professionals do that amateurs seem to overlook or don't bother doing that can have a huge impact on your output and the quality of your eventual recording. Once you've made a recording, there's normally imperfections. I mean, come on, you've done all, everything in your power to make sure everyone knew you were recording, you eliminated all background noise or as much as you could, yet in a, one of your best takes that you're just really happy with, there's a random noise halfway through. You can't be perfect every time, and this is where editing comes into it. So now... So nice and subtle, I just wanted to catch those loudest parts. Squash it a tiny bit to give it a bit more presence and a bit more power but generally I just want a really nice subtle way to control the dynamics a bit more and enhance that presence and catch those loudest peaks.